Welcome to another episode of Life at Bethel, where we will discuss the good, the bad, and yes, the ugly. In this episode, we're going to discuss privacy at Bethel, especially when it comes to mail, how they would open your mail and how they would censor it. Did you know that in certain countries, it's illegal to open someone else's mail? What is the federal law for opening mail that is not addressed to you? Well, according to Legal Beagle, most people understand that it's illegal to open mail that's not addressed to them. What's not so widely understood is just how serious the consequences can be. Intentionally opening, intercepting, or hiding someone else's mail is the felony crime of mail theft. It comes with some heavyweight penalties, including five years incarceration in a federal prison. One of the things that all Jehovah's Witnesses are taught from a very young age, from the moment they become a Bible student, and that is you do what you are told. In fact, recently the Watchtower made the statement to the effect, even if we tell you to do something that's absolutely ridiculous, do it anyway. Well, when you grow up in a culture like that, or you're a part of a group where this is the cultural attitudes and views, it can create some interesting problems for you down the road. Because what happens is you can actually begin to do things that is to your own detriment. Things that can actually damage and hurt you because you're simply doing what you were told. One of the most interesting things about Bethel is that there is truly a lack of privacy. In fact, when you go to a Bethel meeting, they'll tell you straight up front, you're going to be living in what is known as institutional living. And for a lot of people, institutional living is hard especially for females because of the lack of privacy. Well, for both male and female, they can be affected by how privacy is done at Bethel. I just want to share a couple of interesting experiences I had. Because you're so obedient to the society, to the branch, to what the organization says, you will do things not even realizing that they're actually violating your basic privacy. Well, how does it happen? Well, when I was at Bethel, they didn't open all of your mail. They selected what they would open. And let me give you an example of what they would open. I remember coming home from work one day. And what they typically do is during the day when I was at Bethel, the housekeepers would get your mail. They bring it to your room. They would lay it either on your desk or they lay it on the bed. So when I walked into my room, I noticed that one of my pieces of mail was open. And I'm thinking, who opened, my, who opened my mail? I knew I normally got home before my roommate, so I know he hadn't done it. So I'm like, who opened this mail? And so it was a letter from Kings County informing me of an upcoming jury duty. So I opened up the letter and I read through it, but there was also something that was inserted in the letter. The legal department at Bethel had put a little slip inside for me to sign. And basically what it said is, JT, just sign this right here, send it back to the legal office, and we'll take care of this for you because you will not be going to serve on jury duty. So the Watchtower Society's legal department actually intervenes when Bethelites receive a jury notice from Kings County. At this time, you fill the form out and you send it back to the legal department and they will forward it to Kings County court system. And they do this by literally opening up your letter. Something that when I look back now, you can't believe how they simply just invaded your privacy. The society also took an interest in other forms of mail that Bethelites would receive. Many Bethelites had subscriptions to various magazines and publications that they would have come in. But there was one magazine that when it came in, it created a little problem. And that magazine was Sports Illustrated. Once a year, Sports Illustrated did what was known as the Swimsuit Edition. Well, for Bethelites who had a subscription to Sports Illustrated, this edition was not delivered to their room. In fact, there was a sister at Bethel. Her name was Sister Couch. Some of you may know her husband. Her husband ran the entire Bethel home. His name was George Couch. George Couch was one of the society's vice presidents. But yeah, his wife basically oversaw the mail department. And so if you wanted to get your swimsuit edition, 
They made you come down and get it. They wanted to embarrass you. They wanted to humiliate you. And so once again, an invasion of privacy. You paid for this, but they wouldn't let you get it until you came and got it from them. And so here you have literally grown people, grown men and women, once again, being treated just like children. This is how they invade your privacy, oftentimes at Bethel. And we see something very interesting taking place in many congregations where the brothers are gathering information on people in the congregation. I had someone just recently tell me that they got a phone call from one of the elders and he said, I'm calling to get your two daughters phone number and their email address. And his two daughters are under 18. And so he asked him, well, why, why do you need to call my daughter? You can call me. He said, well, we'll let you know if, uh, before we call them. And so here they were, once again, very cavalier. And the reason why, because the organization simply just feels at liberty to do basically whatever they want to do. So as we mentioned before, because of the culture, uh, the friends, when the society says jump, the friends basically say how high. But interestingly today, that has changed some. Some are actually asking questions. Well, do I have to do this? In fact, the gentleman from the EU, Salvador, he reached out to us to share his story of how when the congregation was passing out the consent forms, he began to ask a few questions about, do I have a right not to sign? And of course, the brothers told him, this is for your protection, so you need to sign it. He even contacted the government official in his country that handles this specific department. And they wrote back and let him, no, no, you don't have to sign. So he took what he found from what he received from the government official, and he made the mistake of sharing it with the elders and the circuit overseer, as well as a representative from the local branch. He thought he was going to be sharing something that they would find interesting. Instead, that was not the case. And he paid a very high price because from the moment that he began to ask questions, they began to distance himself. They began to limit what they allowed him to do in the congregation. And why? All because he was merely exercising a right that he had as a human citizen of his country. It reminds me of the same at Bethel. If we did not sign that letter that was enclosed in our jury duty notice, the ramifications would have not been pretty. Did you realize that we have basic human rights and legal rights, but many times because of the way we view the society, we allow them to literally encroach on those rights. And because of the culture, we simply just do what we're told. We don't stop. We don't think about it. We do it because the society, yes, the branch, the organization said to do it. So what you have to do is literally take a step back and ask the question, do I have to do this? Is this something that really violates the rights that I have as a person? Or am I simply doing it because they told me to? This has been JT. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Life at Bethel, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, we invite you to subscribe to our channel and be sure to hit that bell so that you can receive notifications when we upload new content. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video. This program was sponsored by Critical Thinkers.